Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, student loan forgiveness and a couple of aspects about it that are kind of showing up in the media and maybe need some clarification. The first topic is uh, the topic of overlooked borrowers. And the second is whether or not you're going to be taxed on the forgiveness as income. If you are concerned about this, stick around because I will tell you there is some bad reporting out there on this. Okay, overlooked borrowers first. There's about 5 million people in the United States that have loans that are under the umbrella of federal family education loans. These loans were part of a program that was uh, terminated, I want to say back in 2010. And the loans were guaranteed by the feds, but they were held commercially. Now, through bank bailouts and students defaulting and the feds ending up with the paper and all of that, about half of them have wound up being owned by the feds. But because these loans are held commercially, the, the forgiveness doesn't apply to them. Now, if you're interested in your particular loan, you can go to studentaid.gov and type in your FSA ID number, and you can get a little bit more information. The interesting part is that the Biden administration appears to be trying to find some way through executive order, some policy directive, whatever, to extend the forgiveness to these loans. Um, or maybe just the half that are owned by the feds. We don't know yet. But while that's really good for the you know five million or two and a half million people that are directly impacted, it's also good for everybody else. It shows that the Biden administration isn't done. When it comes to revamping education costs, the Biden administration isn't finished. They just had a huge win right? All over the papers. Millions of people really, really happy. But they're still working quietly behind the scenes to increase it. They're not finished. Right now, they have to do things that they can manage just within the administration and without Congress. Maybe, uh, after the midterms, the makeup of the Senate and House will look a little bit differently, and they'll be able to uh, enact some wider ranging changes um, because as it stands the Republicans have made it very clear they have no interest in helping uh, students or those with student debt okay on to the second thing are you going to be taxed on this money and there has been a lot of reporting out there on it now the states that are either undecided or you will be taxed on. Arkansas, Hawaii, Idaho, Kentucky, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Mississippi, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. Somebody right now is going to say New York. No. The state of New York has said that they're not taxing on it. Um, and it looks like they're actually going to clarify the language in the law to make sure that that doesn't happen. The other states, it's possible that you're taxed. It's not a guarantee. That's A lot of the reporting includes New York, and a lot of the reporting makes it seem like it is definitely going to happen. Nobody knows that yet. <laughs> uh, certainly, some of these states will tax on it. Um, but the, the list that's out there are those states that could, not those states that will. So hang tight and keep, keep watching and seeing what's going on. Um, so big, uh, big takeaway here, the Biden administration isn't finished. Uh, they might be able to get more done if they had the House and the Senate. Um, and the reporting about the taxes is kind of up in the air. I would wait before you start budgeting on that. So, anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.